My next project is gonna be Project Aqua Bike. And that basically means that I'm gonna be doing next year a swim and bike. Now, I've done an Ironman, but this hip has put me in a position where I do not feel comfortable doing any running. So, I've got some unfinished business with swimming from a technique point of view. So I'm gonna be working on my swimming technique. And I also really wanna drive my power through the roof with the bike. So I'm gonna just go really, really all in on those two. And I'm gonna be doing a, effectively, it's a half Ironman. So it's a 70.3, but just the bike and the swim. New set of scales, uh, have a look at those in a minute. Just some cheapos. I'm gonna be taking a waist measurement to have a look at my stomach. Take pictures and see my progress as it unfolds. Fitness testing on the bike, fitness testing in the pool. And they're gonna be my metrics for success for Project Aquabike. After trial and error, different ways of eating, different ways of training and combining the two, I've typically found that this works for me. And I want to stress that this works for me. Because if you wanted to classify the sort of body type that I am, I put on muscle mass pretty quick, but I also put on body fat pretty quick as well. You've got mesomorphs who are the ones in the middle. They're genetically gifted, if you like. They put on muscle mass really well and maintain low levels of body fat. And then at the other end, you've got ectomorphs who typically struggle to put on muscle mass and struggle to put on body fat. You'll find that you're a combination in some capacity, but I'd say I'm more dominant towards the endomorph end, just knowing my body. You've landed on this point of time where it's Thursday. Now, psychologically, I like to have a little bit more of my life go into what I eat and what I drink. Basically meaning that it will allow me room to sort of have some things that I really like. This breakfast is gonna show you that. And then Saturdays as well, that's part of my life where I'll go out with Marianne, we'll have nice dinners, we'll have steak, we'll have wine, a few beers, a couple of drinks. Just allows room to have a life. So that'll happen on Thursdays with a bit more social on Saturday. Which means that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm a lot more focused with what goes in my mouth. So let me show you what I'm gonna be making. So what we've got is 21 day matured beef steaks for 48.2 grams of protein and 5.6 grams of fat. I've got three eggs, which I'm just gonna scramble with no milk, just on their own, which is 276 calories, 26.5 grams of protein and 6.3 grams of fat. And then these, which I'm gonna to toast, are four chocolate chip pancakes from the co-op which are 668 calories five grams of fat and 25.8 grams of carbs so as you can see this meal in itself majority is protein and fat the part that everybody forgets is to put your butter and your oil in that you use because that's an extra 50 to 100 calories going around in the day which adds up now for the fun stuff i'm going to take you through my training split and calories for the next 38 weeks whenever i plan my training out and my calories out for clients and myself i like to work on a macro cycle which is basically longer term so without looking at this a macro cycle could be 12 months for example a meso cycle could then be a quarter of the year one one month to three months and then the micro cycle is every week or every month so basically you've got a longer term objective broken down into medium and shorter term objectives. The way that this is split is 38 weeks is the macro cycle and then you've got four meso cycles. You've got a base phase, a build phase, a peak slash RS which is race specific phase and then a taper phase. So within each of those blocks there are going to be objectives. Now, as a side note, this is not set in stone. You do need to allow adjustments you need to allow for uh, having to adapt. You need to allow for injury and all those sorts of things. So not only is it important for me to track objective data, which is the output of the session, it's important to track subjective data at the same time. So there's tools that you can do for that. For me and my clients, I put it straight into the training app where you see your plan and your program. You can actually put in your own notes. 
You can do it on Garmin as well, add notes after the session, which again is really important because you may discover that after doing X amount of training, you are or you aren't adapting to the stress as you should be or you potentially could be. So as I say, without going on that rabbit hole too much, try and track how you, your energy, mood and hunger. They're probably the biggest three that get tracked. Energy, mood and hunger. Every single morning, just on a scale of one to 10 and keep it in a notepad, keep it in a journal and just observe what happens in alignment with how you your energy, mood and hunger in alignment with your training. So the main reason for that is you might be depleting yourself too much. You may be under recovering, not necessarily over training. And you can only get that from data that you, you put in. What we've got here is the first phase. And I'm going to take you through that. So we've got the base phase, which is where I'm at, week one to 16. Now, you might be looking at that and thinking, well, that is a hell of a long time for a base training. Well, it, yes, it is. Theoretically, this is going from off season, off season to on season. So base phase, the objectives for me right now, especially nine weeks post-op, um, the intensity is going to be pretty low and the volume as well is going to be pretty low. What we've then got here is the next phase, week 17 to 30, which is my aerobic and tempo work, starting to push those up. And then the peak phase or race specific phase is week 31 to 37 with that leaves me seven weeks before the event date. What I might find is that I might make my peak phase a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. But typically you're looking at sort of six to nine weeks out, I'd say before the event itself. Uh, that's what worked for me last time on my Ironman. That's what worked for me on High Rocks before. So I'm going to be following the same protocol because I know that works for me. Threshold pace and top speed in this race specific stuff will really start to bump that up. And then in the taper phase, which can be one to two weeks out, I'll then start to look at deloading the body ever so slightly. This is what it looks like from a timeline perspective. So let's move my head. Uh, as I say, we'll just go through the base phase to start with. So what you'll see here is uh, week one, to week 16 and what I like to do is go week one and then how many how many weeks until the event so count it down as well so week one is 38 week two is 37 week three is 36 week four 35 so on and so on what you'll also see here is the percentage block that we're going to increase that basically means that every single week you want to try and increase the intensity or the volume by five to ten percent now the main reason for that gives you progressive overload to put more stress onto the body to get you fitter, get you stronger, ready for race day. What I used to do when I, in my 20s when I was bodybuilding is do this cycle in a five to one or a six to one. So five weeks on, one week deload. For this endurance wise, what I found was better for me was to do three to four weeks on with one week deload. Typically find that that is across the board. On that one week off, it's not actually off, but it's actually operating at 50%. So we're going to follow that protocol. And with the subjective data that I gather at the same time, I'll maybe move that down the line another week or I'll bring it a week earlier. But as I say, that's going to be dependent on how I adapt as the plan unfolds. So after the base phase, we've got build phase, which is week 17 to 30. And then I've put here prep for RS. That basically means I want to bring awareness at week 23 to race-specific work. And then I'll have in mind, in the back of my mind then, to prep for either earlier or later than this block here. Then we've got race-specific at week 31, and then a little bit of a taper uh, at week 38. This is the microcycle, which is every single week. So if we move this up a little bit, so think of a traffic light system. And what I'm going to do for this block is put my easy work from Monday to Friday because the other thing you've got to incorporate is life and work and all those sorts of things. Monday and Friday, I'm going to do my easier work and then I'm going to then, in the middle, do my harder intense work. Approach it in two ways. You can be linear and do three solid hard days or you can do a pyramid where Tuesday is moderate to hard, Wednesday is difficult, Thursday is moderate to hard. And then Saturday and Sunday, that's going to allow you to do your longer endurance stuff. For the sake of where I'm at right now, this is what the split is going to look like because, as I mentioned above, I'm still recovering post-op. So a lot of my focus right now is going to be on the swim. What we're looking at here is Mondays and Fridays, I'm going to do my best to jump on the bike. My bike volume right now is like 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I did it for an hour before and it was the wrong time. It was too early. So 30 to 45 minutes, steady, easy. 
that will adjust ever so slightly this as this evolves i'll probably do an aerobic on monday but then also start to look at tempo work um on fridays so tempo work is that sort of uncomfortably comfortable sort of realm it's like a gray area it's not hard but it's not easy i'm gonna allow myself certain days when i'll i'll do double sessions so i'll be doing upper strength lower strength and then upper strength on the week a saturday or sunday dependent on when i do my longer ride the 30 mile bike i'll do more than likely because of social as well i'll probably do it on sunday and then upper and lower strength in the gym on saturday when you're looking at this as well if you think well i'm not going to be able to do double days that's not a problem at all because what you can do you can double them up a lot of this is not going to be perfect and if you have to move things around to chop and change to fit then obviously please do that but on a general rule of thumb when you're looking at this keep your intensity in the middle tuesday wednesday thursday and then allow for the recovery on the either side and then go again so it's like a push pull back push pull back push pull back so then eventually it should look like um a sort of linear progression improving your fitness and improving your strength now i'm going to take you through the calories that i'm going to be consuming as well just for context i'm currently 95 kilos and i want to lose about five kilos what i found for the ironman i think the lightest i got to is about 88 89 kilos and to be honest with you it just doesn't i don't look right <laughs> unfortunately i'm i'm a bigger frame and i've got a big head <laughs> so when i lose weight i just look like a giant lollipop I'm happy with 90 kilos and I'm happy with the fact not being able to push my speed on the bike as much as I can because I'm a heavier athlete. So if I can push my power as high as I can at 90 kilos and see what my ceiling is, I'm happy with that. If we're looking down here now, 3,019. And what you'll notice is you've got training days, you've got off days and you've got brick days. These are all the same, so don't panic. But as we evolve into different phases, I will be tweaking and adapting these especially on brick day sessions so for example if i'm doing a long swim into a long bike uh, my calorie consumption number is going to change and that usually means that i'm going to put the expenditure of what i've burnt back in i'll do that by tracking on garmin tracking my heart rate and using a, a calculation roughly of what it should be and then making sure that that's the right number by tracking my net weight tracking my energy tracking my hunger and the mood all those sorts of things this is where we're going to be at right now which is here so i'll put you there so this is this is what we're going to be looking at so total calories we're looking at 3019 for now uh, protein is typically set at 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of muscle uh, of weight that you are sorry so i'm 95 kilos and this for me is 1.9 grams per kilo at 188 grams Carbs, you're going to set in the range of four to seven grams per kilo. So this is at 50%, which is 380 grams, which is four. For me, as an endomorph, I like to put it on the lower end because I don't respond very well to carbs. So when I eat heavy carb meals, I, I hold on to it a lot more, I typically find. Um, and then fats, when you're looking at this here, uh, is 0 0.8 to 1.2. This is what I'm going to be tracking. I'm going to be monitoring my net weight on the scales i'm going to be tracking my waist measurement because i want to drop body fat down and i'm going to be tracking all of the food and what i eat and put it in nutri check and then assess and see where my energy mood and hunger and aesthetic is in alignment with that goal of 3019 if i need to adapt it and tweak it then i will going into the following week what you'll typically find is you need to give yourself a seven day window tracking calories to ensure that you are in the right realm and then make make a tweak if necessary moving into the following week so i might look at this at 3019 you'd be like mm, it's a little bit high so i might drop it down to 2900 or 2800 but that's the speed it's week by week any faster than that you it's you're gonna fall off any slower than that you're not going to make any progress now what i mean by that is a lot of people if they've got the goal of losing weight typically want to lose weight as fast as they can that's where it becomes unsustainable and that's typically where you see people go on fad diets all the time thank you for being on this video with me today this is project aqua bike inbound i'm super looking forward to getting back on my feet getting back on the bike getting back in, back in the pool starting to move my body properly again and start to move that needle so if you found this video useful or you found it interesting please give it a like give it a share and consider subscribing to follow along this journey 
as Project Aquabike unfolds. I'm always doing my best to put out the best value and education that I can around energy, health, and performance. And if there is anything that you want to hear or you want to see more of, put it in the comments section below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.